Hello everybody, welcome to this GCSE chemistry video about isotopes and relative atomic mass. This video follows on from my introduction to atomic structure video, so if you've not checked that out yet, I recommend you do so first. In this video, we're going to look at what isotopes actually are, and then we're going to move on to look at mass number and compare that to the term relative atomic mass, and we will finish by looking at how we can calculate relative atomic mass when we've been given some information about the isotopes. Hopefully you should already remember that all the atoms of a particular element will have the same number of protons. And so if we considered an element, for instance beryllium, we know from the nuclear symbol that's shown here that beryllium has got an atomic number of four which means it will have four protons. And so all of the atoms of beryllium will have four protons in their nucleus. And they will also have four electrons as well, assuming that they are neutral atoms. If we look now at some examples, we can see that both of these nuclear symbols that we've shown here are representing the element lithium because they both have got the atomic number of three, and so they both have got three protons. Where we can see that they are different is their top number, which for the one on the right has got a number seven, and the one on the left has got a number six. Now, this number is referred to as the mass number, and this is the number of things inside an atom's nucleus that contain mass. And the things in the nucleus that contain mass, as you hopefully remember, are neutrons and protons. And so in the nucleus of lithium-6, which is how we would refer to the element on the left, we know that there are three protons in the nucleus. And that's the same for lithium-7 on the right-hand side. Where they differ is that lithium-6 has got three neutrons and we calculate the number of neutrons by subtracting the atomic number from the mass number. So six take away three is three neutrons. And for lithium seven on the right hand side, we can do the same calculation, only this time it's seven take away three, which gives us four neutrons. And so both of these atoms are lithium because they have got three protons in their nucleus. And since they are both neutral atoms, they will also have three electrons in their shells as well. And so they'll behave the same chemically because they've got the same electrons. And the only difference is the number of neutrons that they have in their nucleus. The word isotope actually comes from Greek. And the iso part of it means equal and the tope means place. And this word is very, very descriptive because the chemicals, lithium, the two isotopes, they are both found in the same place in the periodic table because they've got the same number of protons. So isotope means they're in equal places, the same place in the periodic table. Sometimes a test question will ask you to compare and contrast two isotopes of the same element. So they might say that here are two isotopes of carbon, explain how they are similar and different. Now there are two ways to do this. The first way is to take it very literally and to use your periodic table that you get given in a test and to say that these elements have got the same atomic number, 6, whereas they have got different mass numbers, 12 for carbon 12 on the left hand side and 14 for carbon 14 on the right hand side. You could be asked a very similar question to comment on the similarities and differences of these isotopes, but you might be asked to focus on the subatomic particles. So these elements have got the same atomic number, which means they've got the same number of protons, six, whereas they've got different mass numbers, and that means that they've got a different number of neutrons. And when you get given actual excerpts from the periodic table, actually use them and say six protons for both of them. The carbon on the left has got six neutrons. The carbon on the right has got eight, 14 take away six. We can use these skills in this example of chlorine 
more quickly this time to say that these are both chlorine atoms because they've got the atomic number of 17, 17 protons. And the mass numbers, though, are 35 and 37 because chlorine 35 has got 18 neutrons and chlorine 37 has got 20 neutrons. Now, when we look at chlorine in the periodic table, we see a slightly different representation. And this looks confusing because it looks like chlorine has got a mass number of 35.5, but that's actually not the case because you simply can't have half a proton or half a neutron. And this number then is not the mass number, it is the relative atomic mass. And normally in the periodic table, the mass number and the relative atomic mass actually are the same number, whereas for chlorine and for copper, they are slightly different. We see a decimal value for chlorine and for copper. And we'll look now at why we get this difference. So we've seen already that the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons added together. Whereas the relative atomic mass is the average mass of an atom of a particular element. And the best way to visualize that is to imagine that we had a box with 100 atoms of a particular element inside them. So let's pick chlorine, which we know has got two isotopes, 35 and 37. Now, in this sample of 100 atoms of chlorine, we could get them on a box and find what the average is by adding up the mass of all the atoms of chlorine and then dividing it by 100. And we get a value of 35.5. So that is the average mass of a chlorine atom. And it's the same for copper. The average mass of a copper atom is 63.5. That was an explanation about what relative atomic mass is. Now we're going to look at how we actually calculate relative atomic mass values. Now to do this, you use the equation that I've shown in the box here. So you calculate the relative atomic mass by adding together the sum of all the isotope abundances multiplied by the isotope mass number and then divide it by the total sum of the abundances. Now that sounds really really complicated so let's take a look at an example and we'll stick with chlorine because that's what we've been working with. Now chlorine's got two isotopes 35 and 37 but chlorine 35 is much more common. What you find is that 75 percent of all the chlorine that exists on earth is chlorine 35 whereas 25 percent is chlorine 37. So to find the sum of the isotope abundances, what we have to do is we have to take 75 and add it to 25, and that goes on the bottom of our expression here. When you're working with percentages, of course, the sum will always be 100. Then the more complicated term on the top of our expression is isotope abundance multiplied by isotope mass number. And here, it's not as complicated as it looks. What we need to do is isotope abundance 75 multiplied by mass number 35. And then the other isotope has an abundance of 25 and its mass number is 37. And so we work those out on our calculator and add them together and that goes on the top of the expression. And so we end up with 3550 divided by 100 which gets us 35.5. If we finish by looking at one further example, we're going to return to lithium, where we can see that lithium-6 has got an abundance of 7.5%, whereas lithium-7 has got an abundance of 92.5%. And so, if we calculate the relative atomic mass value, what we need to do is we need to do the abundance of lithium-6, 7.5, multiply it by 6, and add that to the abundance of lithium-7, which is 92.5, which is then multiplied by the mass number of lithium-7, which is 7, then divide it by the sum of the abundances, or the sum of the percentages, which is divided by 100. And that then gives us our total value, which we divide by 100, and we get our final answer here for the relative atomic mass of lithium, usually given to one decimal point. Okay then folks, I hope that was useful. See you again soon. Goodbye.